okay, hopefully you can hear us. So, um, I don't know how we're supposed to know whether you can. We haven't got any technical people here this week. It's not turns out yet. No, no. So just, you know, talk amongst yourselves for the next <laughs> three minutes and we'll get going. You can play if you want to. Think Thomas's think. services have never been so punctual. <laughs> Ten thirty, everybody. Um, I've no idea what's going on here. It's even more ridiculous than it was last week, um, because this time we're here in the vicarage, and I have no technical expertise whatsoever. And uh, the wonderful Caleb, who was here last week making everything work properly, is wherever he is in his house. So um, you've got me and Lucy. Um, and uh, it's all very, you might get some uh, noisy children, which is what we said we, uh, we wanted last week to make it feel a bit more authentic. Well, they might come running in at any moment. Um, and uh, already we've had a, a smashed plate this morning in the Rycroft household. Um, I just wanted to say, apparently some people said last week, if you're watching and it's not, uh, it's buffering or whatever, it's not kind of keeping up, if you pause and then watch it 30 seconds behind you might find that improves the situation i don't know we'll find out hey um 
we're standing in front of my books just to make me look clever but I want you to know I've only read about five of them so don't be uh, <laughs> don't be put off by that and also look I'm wearing kind of casual this morning because it's I'm at home it feels a bit weird to dress up in my <laughs> clerical gear but if you think that's very reassuring and you want me to do that next time then I can so you can let me know um, I didn't say yesterday on the email if you got the email um, <clears throat> that uh, one of the songs we will be singing this morning is Blessed Be Your Name so that's something you could we're going to sing that in a moment later on in the service if you want to google the words we're going to have When I Survey the Wondrous Cross uh, Sovereign Over Us and uh, at the end we're going to have This Is Amazing Grace um, and lots of little hearts and, and thumbs up are popping up on the, on the Facebook feed so that's nice isn't it um, anyway uh, we're going to start by, I'm going to read some words from Psalm 46 just before we sing. This has been, uh, well, several people have shared this with me through the week. I think it's been, the words in this psalm are very powerful for the time that we're in at the moment. So uh, here we are. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And that psalm ends, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. So let's just be still for a moment, knowing that God is God and that he is with us, that he is our refuge and our strength. And then we'll sing in a moment. Father, thank you that you're with us this morning. Whatever um, our situation, wherever we are, whatever our home life is like, whether there are kids running about or we're feeling really quite alone, we thank you, Lord, that you are with us. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Um, can I invite you, if you're able, to stand? I know you might feel a bit awkward doing that, um, if you're just in your lounge or especially if you're in bed watching this, um, but physically it's a lot easier to sing when we do stand because um, this part of our body is stretched out um, and also I just think kind of spiritually we all feel more like we're worshipping if we do what we usually do so um, obviously if you're unable to then stay where you are but if you are able I invite you to stand and we will worship together.
Uh, let's just take a moment to come before God and to admit again our need for his mercy and forgiveness and rescue in our lives. Father, we're sorry for all the things we do which dishonour you, for all the times when we ignore you, turn our backs on you. We thank you that you tell us that as we trust in your son Jesus, you bring rescue and salvation into our lives. Thank you that it is your desire to heal this world. So may we know this morning the forgiveness that comes through Jesus and the new life given to us. Amen. And a special prayer for today. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ, you delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Amen. Amen. Thank you to those who... Uh, I wondered if the keyboard was a bit loud, and uh, somebody texted in saying the keyboard was too loud. So we would turn it down for later on, that'll be fine, and then you'll be able to hear uh, what Lucy's singing as well. And even if you heard a particularly beautiful voice in the background, that was me. Um, now, anyway, I'm going to just share a few thoughts. It feels a bit strange to be standing up. I was going to sit down, but then we thought it wouldn't really work with the keyboard. So um, we are doing this odd thing again. And um, I, I really wanted to think this week, I was trying to think about how do we interpret these times? How can we understand what's going on in the world? Um, and that's certainly not something I've got uh, the answer to um, in any uh, holistic way. But the, the uh, prayer that we prayed last week, we're going to pray it again a bit later on, from the Book of Common Prayer in 1662, this prayer for times of plague and grievous sickness. Um, it was striking to me because one of the things that... Um, Cranmer writes in that prayer it, it, it is clearly to compare the plagues that may have been going on at that time with the times when God was judging his people in the Old Testament and he, he talks about you know in the past you judged your people and then you you had mercy on them and you spared them and I suppose then the question comes, and, and people have asked me this question over the last few days, is this some sort of judgment from God? Is this God judging the world? Is it God judging the West? And um, I certainly wouldn't want to make that kind of pronouncement. But I think we have to accept when we read the scriptures, and maybe this is hard to accept, that God must, he's not absent, is he? He's certainly not unaware of what is going on in this world and actually I think when we read the scriptures we can't even say that he's he certainly isn't powerless to intervene that, that actually very clearly the Bible tells us that God reigns sovereign over this world over this universe we know there's the presence of evil we know that Satan has power in this world but it's all under God's authority and frankly, that's not an easy thing to, to, to hear at this time. You know, certainly, initially, it might be easier to, to respond and think, well, we can just absolve, you know, we, God is God is he's distant or he's, you know, it's, it's all about what the devil's doing. This is evil running right in the world. But actually, I'm not sure we can have that view of God when we read the Bible. God remains in charge. We've just read Psalm 46. He continues to reign over this world. Now this week, um, he didn't want me to mention him, but I'm going to mention him anyway. I've taken inspiration again from Phil Moore. 
And I want to look at some strange verses from the Old Testament, as well as some wonderful verses from the New Testament. Uh, because these are strange times, and we're looking at Numbers chapter 21. And this comes with the, the people of God in the wilderness, and uh, they've complained ever since God has rescued them miraculously from slavery in Egypt. They've been complaining that God hasn't provided for them uh, properly, that they're in this terrible situation in the desert. And we pick it up. Numbers 21, this is verse 5. The people said, why did you make us leave Egypt? Just to let us die in the desert? There's no bread or water and we can't stand this awful food. That was the miraculous manna that God was providing for them. So the Lord sent poisonous snakes among the people. They bit the people and many of the Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we criticised the Lord and you. Pray to the Lord so that he will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. People looked at the bronze snake after they were bitten and they lived. So here are God's people, and they've been complaining about uh, what's been going on with them, it, it, with them in the wilderness, and God sends this epidemic of venomous snakes amongst the people. They're being bitten, and many of them are dying. This is a really horrible situation. Now, it's similar in many ways to what we're going through now. Oh, apparently my connection is unstable, so they're trying to reconnect me. Uh, just give me a second, because something's going a bit wrong here with this. Oh, yeah, I think we're back. I hope we're back. Um, but uh, anyway, where were we? The God's people... Um, are being bitten. And there's something similar here. The coronavirus pandemic is something invisible to us. We can't see this enemy like they could see the snakes coming into us. But it's a similar sort of, sort of situation. And in this passage from Numbers, the people have been complaining against God. They've been refusing to be thankful for what God has given them. He's provided for them miraculously ever since they've been uh, brought out of slavery in Egypt. And God responds, and we might not like this, but God responds by sending these snakes amongst the people. Because they just keep on complaining, they keep on uh, in their attitude of bitterness. And as I've said, I'm not claiming this morning that God is sending this pandemic on the world as a judgment. That's beyond my scope of understanding, certainly. But I do notice that like the Israelites in this story, we are often arrogant, we're often bitter, we often complain and grumble, we often are ignorant of God when our lives are comfortable. And the question maybe for us today is how are we going to respond to this pandemic? I think we can learn from these people in the desert. Because these people recognized that they had sinned and they turned to God because they knew that it was only in God that they could find rescue. And as quickly, if you notice the, the graciousness and the mercy of God, as quickly as the Lord had sent these snakes amongst them, he sent rescue. He sent a way of finding salvation. It was a pretty weird thing that he told Moses to do. He said he wanted him to make a snake and put it on a pole and hold it up. And whenever somebody looked at this brass, bronze, whatever it was, snake on the pole, 
then they would be saved, they'd be healed from any of the wounds that had come from being bitten by these snakes. So God sent this strange way of them being uh, saved. It was a, a very simple thing that they had to do. But I suspect it wasn't actually a very easy thing either. You think they wanted to look at a snake when the thing that was going around killing people in the camp were snakes on the ground, poisonous snakes. The last thing they would have wanted to look at was an embodiment of the terror that was terrorising the camp, the snakes. It was a strange cure for their sickness. Now why am I talking about this? We don't have a coronavirus on a pole that we can look at and it will save us from this uh, virus, this disease. What's it got to do with us? Well, you might know that Jesus in the New Testament, when he's talking to a man called Nicodemus, who is trying to find out more about Jesus, who is trying to understand the times in which he was living, Jesus quoted this passage from the Old Testament. I'm going to read these words from John 3, 14 to 17. Jesus says, Just as Moses lifted up a snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save through him. It's important to ask ourselves, in this growing crisis, what is God saying to us? Now, I think as we read the scriptures at the moment, we probably hear God saying many things to us. We're probably more alert to his voice than we often would be. But I also want to say this morning, I think it's not controversial to think that the main thing is still the main thing. And what is the main thing that God says to us through his word? It's that he has come to save us. He is the one who comes to save us. That Jesus, whose name means God the Rescuer, has come to save us. Now I don't know, and neither do you, whether God will turn back this coronavirus plague in the same sort of miraculous way that he turned back that plague of snakes, that he healed the physical sickness of the people in Israel. I don't know about that. I think we should pray for that. As I said last week, God can do more than we could ask or imagine. But I do know one thing, and that is that on a much deeper level, and actually on a much more important level, we can be totally confident that God is able to save us. That God can bring salvation from this crisis for anyone who puts their trust in him. That actually for all of us who look to Jesus, who look to the one lifted up on the cross, just as that snake was lifted up on that pole in the desert, that if we look to him, we can know salvation. And a salvation that is deeper, more wonderful than a physical healing. You might well have heard of Charles Spurgeon, the famous preacher, and in the 19th century, when he was 15 years old, he was out in a snowstorm. And in order to get out of the snowstorm, he went into this little Methodist chapel. And uh, he found a stand-in preacher preaching on Isaiah 45, verse 22, which says, Look unto me and be saved. And this is from Spurgeon's autobiography. He says the guy was... Uh, he was a standing preacher, he wasn't eloquent, he wasn't saying very much at all. And he said, then he looked at me under the gallery, and I dare say with so few present, he knew me to be a stranger, just fixing his eyes on me as if he knew all my heart. He said, young man, you look very miserable. Well, I did, 
but I hadn't been accustomed to have remarks made from the pulpit on my personal appearance before. However, it was a good blow, struck right home. He continued, and you will always be miserable. Miserable in life and miserable in death if you don't obey my text. But if you obey now, this moment, you will be saved. Then lifting up his hands, he shouted, as only a primitive Methodist could do, Young man, look to Jesus Christ. Look, look, look. You have nothing to do but look and live. I saw at once the way of salvation. I know not what else he said. I didn't take much notice of it. I was so possessed with that one thought. Like as when the brazen serpent was lifted up, the people only looked and were healed. So it was with me. And this, I think, is the main thing that Jesus wants to say to us this morning. But while looking is simple, in some ways I don't think it's easy. Remember we said the Israelites had to look upon a snake, which was the very embodiment of everything that was terrifying them at that time. And do you know what? I think we too are supposed to be looking at something that's terrible. Something that's not easy to look upon. Jesus hanging on a cross is not supposed to be a pleasant sight for us. Jesus became a curse. Paul writes in Galatians. He is cursed as he hangs there on the cross. The snake itself reminds us of that snake in the Garden of Eden who tempted Adam and God of all creatures in the world. Jesus, who is lifted up, is lifted up in shame and disgrace on the cross. The Bible says he became sin. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. That's not supposed to be a pretty thing to behold. And these are the lengths that Jesus has gone to in order to rescue us. This is what God has done so that we might be saved. By his wounds we were healed, the Bible says. And of course this demonstrates to us that God is with us in all of this, God is a God who is prepared to come and enter our suffering. He's not distant. He's not just sending this upon us from far away. He's with us in a time of suffering. And I think there's another reason why it's hard for us to look and believe at this time. This man lifted up for us. It's because just like those Israelites, it requires for us to admit our sin, to turn to God and to say, we're part of this, part of the evil in the world, part of the suffering in the world, that's us. And we can't do anything to rescue ourselves from it. We need a rescuer. That requires humility on our part to admit that we need the help of God, that we can't do it on our own. It means we've got to put down our arrogance, which says we can do it all. We've got to look to one who was made sin, who was made a curse for us. It's not easy, it's not pleasant. It's not comfortable to beg for mercy. It's not comfortable to need pity from someone else. But that's the situation we're in. In fact, that's the situation we're in always and everywhere. But right now it's highlighted to us because of this crisis that we find ourselves in. And I wonder if this crisis will bring us to a crisis point. A crisis point where we have to call out to God, where we have to ask for his rescue and for his help. Look to the sun and be saved. That's the message for today. Jesus told Martha, whose brother Lazarus had just died, I am the resurrection 
am the life. Everyone who believes in me will live even though they die. God may or may not rescue us physically from this virus, but he rescues us eternally into a perfect existence with him, a perfect future with him, beyond our wildest imagination. The rescue that he brings as we look upon the sun is that we would live with him forever. And just as I finish this morning um, this, this talk, I wonder if anybody has noticed what the symbol of the World Health Organization is. It's a snake on a pole. So maybe as you see that over these coming days and weeks, it will remind you, look to the sun and be saved. I'm going to pray that um, prayer again from the Book of Common Prayer, and then we'll sing a couple of songs. When I survey the wondrous cross, and sovereign over us. So let's pray. Almighty God, in your wrath you sent a plague upon your own people in the wilderness for their obstinate rebellion against Moses. Also in the time of David you put to death 10,000 with the plague of pestilence. And yet in your mercy you saved the rest. Have pity upon us, broken-hearted sinners, who are now visited with great sickness and mortality. Just as you accepted an atonement and commanded the destroying angel to cease from punishing, so may it now please you to withdraw from grievous sickness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Hey, Lucy knows what's happening. She's coming back in. We're going to sing again now. <coughs>
just left me. So I think that means there's more worship. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And do you want this as long as this? Is that everyone? No. no. Okay, cool. Sorry. Minor slip. We're doing sovereign over us. Um, if you'd like to Google that, if you haven't already. <laughs>
So as we said this morning, God remains sovereign. Even in the valley, he is faithful. We're just going to spend a little bit of time now in prayer. And um, perhaps you'd leave. Uh, just, we'll just take a moment quietly uh, to remember that God is with us in this. that we have different voices leading us um, I'd ask Marion to write prayers for us this morning as we reflect on this global pandemic of the coronavirus we know that we don't have the answers to the whys and wherefores of this virus but scripture is clear that God has not abandoned us the coronavirus is causing such suffering Let's focus now on those key workers in York, the UK and around the world as they seek to serve others. Lord Jesus, we thank you for those on the front line of disease, for their hard work, dedication and self-sacrifice. Please help the government to be able to supply the NHS with all the protective equipment and testing, ventilators and supplies that they need to keep themselves and patients safe. Give the NHS staff resilience, courage, good health and patience. Please have mercy on the people in underdeveloped and war-torn areas of the world, such as Idlib in Syria, as they fear being overwhelmed. Please help scientists too to find solutions to offset this terrible disease. Lord, have mercy. We pray too for governments around the world, for wisdom and integrity as they make momentous decisions affecting millions. Please bring good from this situation so that governments may reassess any unwise priorities and follow your ways of righteousness and peace. We pray for Prince Charles, for Boris Johnson, for Matt Hancock, for Chris Whitty and for others in authority in our own country who have the virus. Please restore them to health and help them to guide our country well. As lockdown continues in York and elsewhere, we pray that people may adhere to the official guidelines. Please be with those looking after their children at home, those with loneliness, health and financial worries, those living in households full of tension. Lord, have mercy. We also praise God for the goodness being seen around us in York and elsewhere. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a great capacity to love and to experience compassion and kindness. Thank you for the joy of joining in the hand clapping on Thursday as communities gave appreciation for the NHS staff and others in their dedication and service. Thank you too for all the voluntary groups that have sprung up in neighbourhoods and elsewhere as folks have come together and are serving each other. Thank you for all the work here at St Thomas's to support our congregation and the wider community. We pray too for the church here and throughout the world. Lord have mercy. And Lord God thank you for all your work in creating us and the beautiful world that you've made. It is amazing. Please forgive us for letting creation down making a mess of things. Forgive us for our selfishness, greed, mismanagement, for spoiling this amazing planet. Help us as individuals and governments to rethink priorities. May our world be able to take a brief Sabbath rest at this time and partially recover from overwhelming levels of pollution. Please show us how to do things better when this crisis is over. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we thank you that you've opened the door to the kingdom of God for all, regardless of age, economic or social status or ethnicity. 
Just as you offered life to those who looked to the serpent in the wilderness, you offer abundant, eternal life now to all who accept your invitation to believe and trust in Jesus. Please help us here in St Thomas's in the Groves, in York, in the United Kingdom, in the rest of the world, to enter the Kingdom of God and to receive your love, peace, comfort, help and joy as you walk with us in these difficult times. Finally, let's just take a moment of silence where we can bring our personal concerns and remember individuals, situations and countries that are on our own hearts. Lord, have mercy. Let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing in a moment. This is Amazing Grace. I don't know if that's actually the proper name for it, but anyway, something like that, isn't it? Um, just before we do, um, I wanted to mention that, well, we hope to do this each week. Um, we're going to have a prayer meeting via Zoom on Tuesday at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, so if you've got, if you're on our email list, you should have had an email with the little code you need to join in with that. If you're not on the list and you want to join in, let me know and I can send it to you. Um, and also, we hope to have a, a, a worship time live streamed worship on Friday at six uh, on this YouTube channel and Facebook, which Louise will be leading, um, and then. Just look out for the YouTube channel and the Facebook uh, because there might be other things being uploaded uh, and look out for emails I'm sending out. We're just going to try and keep supporting each other, keep in touch. And if you need anything, please get in touch with me or with someone else at St Thomas's, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that you have what you need at this time. But before we finish, um, we're going to uh, sing one more song and I'll pray a blessing. This is Amazing Grace. So shall we Shall we sing together? Thank you. 
final prayer um, I was Derek shared with me a, um, a word from 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 1 this week which said really struck him as he read it uh, we see this virus sweeping through uh, the, the world to the nation and this is what Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 3 pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes and then later he says, the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. So I'm going to pray a final blessing uh, now. And Father, we do pray that prayer that Paul encourages us to pray, that the word of the Lord would spread rapidly. We may see this disease spreading, but more so, Lord, we want to pray that your word would spread and that it would be honoured wherever it's heard, that many people would come to you and find this amazing rescue and salvation that we've spoken about this morning. And Father, thank you that you will strengthen us, that you will protect us eternally. May we know your blessing, Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, in our lives, in the lives of everyone we love through this time. Amen. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. Let's share that with whoever you're with. Have a cup of coffee. You're allowed to do that, but just not with uh, anybody who's not in your own house. Okay, um, and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Now I just have to turn these things off. <laughs> Don't know how to do that.